Hi, it's um, the 17th of May in the orchard and this is uh, a little reflection on um, the issue of uh, crop protection and um, spraying. Let's squash a couple of weevils there. Uh, yeah, uh, this is one of our pear trees and uh, there's a degree of damage on this from these little copper brown and uh, green uh, beetly things which seem to be hatching out in quite large numbers. There's uh, another one of the little fellas. Um, basically if you can see something crawling on your uh, uh, leaves and they're getting chewed, <laughs> it's probably not good. Uh, right, now I just want to, I hope this is now to focus, I'll put it on macro to film those things close up. A few words about crop protection. That's a politically correct term for um, spraying your uh, trees with poison, uh, which is a, a negative term. Of course, they both refer to exactly the same uh, activity. Um, now, I'm getting quite a few requests to say more about spraying the trees, and I've had a few specific requests uh, to the inbox and um, uh, you know, to the profile saying, you know, I've got this problem with my trees, what should I spray it with? Now, I'm in general not going to reply to those questions for several very genuine reasons. I mean, firstly, um, you know, that is sounding too unpleasant. I have no obligation to do so, and it could be a very great deal of time. You know, what I can post, I post. Uh, you know, I can't act as an unpaid um, global uh, sort of uh, advisor. Uh, to everybody on specifics. Um, secondly, the laws are very strict. They're very strict where I live, they're probably very strict where you live, and uh, if I give advice and one of our government busybodies or snitches uh, looks at YouTube and decides to um, have a go at me, well Britain is an extremely heavily regulated country and the biggest growth industry certainly over the last dozen years has been government busybodying um, so I'll be exposing myself to you know aggravation not that we do anything that's wrong or that we shouldn't do or that we're ashamed of or that's illegal or that we can't justify with documentation sure but I, I, there's no need for me to go on no, and I don't wish to um, but I will say a few things which are in general true about the whole question of crop protection um, I've said a lot about this elsewhere and I put up an essay with some uh, photographs on the fruitwise.net website under pests and diseases. Um, first of all, uh, in this uh, fallen and broken world uh, there are many good things to appreciate and to be grateful for, but there are also mosquitoes which carry malaria, there are sore scaled, scaled vipers which will give you a very bad uh, last few hours of your life if you step on one. There are men with machine guns and uh, there are wicked politicians and there are pests and diseases which afflict uh, your fruit trees and in all of these cases we have to do what we can about them. And now I'm not quite sure what that is but I don't like the look of it at all. Um, a lot of this chewing around here is done by these uh, weevils. Now we took these, these little chaps here that I'm just going to squash. Now we um, haven't used any insecticide yet this year, we're going to use some more. But basically if you want a good reliable crop uh, then there's a number of cultural things to do, begin with healthy trees, avoid uh, growing fruit varieties like Cox's Orange Pippin which are very uh, susceptible to a wide range of diseases. Um, don't plant trees too close together, prune them carefully, obviously feed and nourish the trees well as appropriate. You maybe need to water them if necessary, particularly in the first year. Um, keep the grass cl uh, you know, clear around the base, whether by mulching or as we do by the use of uh, a uh, non-persistent um, safe uh, herbicide, which uh, I don't know, glyphosate or Roundup. Uh, but you will need to make some kind of assessment of the pest and disease burden that you get in your locality and uh, take appropriate action, mainly to prevent it, because usually once the damage is done, uh, you can't do anything. You can't retro spray. You know, when you discover that your apples have got codling moth maggot in them, uh, you can't retrofit a solution to that. You can only uh, try to work out when uh, you need to hit them with insecticide and do that in the following year. Um, and by the way, uh, pheromone traps are very helpful for that. I'll show you something about pheromone traps later. They're also useful for plum maggots. But yeah, basically what do we do? What we do, first of all, we follow all the regulations and keep good records to prove that we have. 
Uh, we study our, disease, our trees, we read the books. Uh, a good book you can get is The Apple Grower by Michael Phillips, particularly good uh, for the organic side of things and for the American uh, side of things. Uh, the, the Fruit Garden Display by the Royal Horticultural Society is very good, but it's, uh, it's a little out of date and it's out of print as well. Um, get, get the information from where you can. Uh, what we usually do is we hit with fungicide, uh, plus or minus an insecticide, before the blossom comes out. You never spray insecticide on the blossom because you may kill bees. Uh, you may need to spray twice. Uh, we just sprayed once and with fungicide only. Uh, which may be why we've got so many, we've got a lot of insect damage, we've actually got more um, maggots than we usually have. We've got a lot of these pesky weevils. Um, if you hit with too much insecticide too often, you'll kill your beneficial insects, such as ladybugs, ladybirds, which uh, eat aphids. So it's a difficult balance to try to achieve. Uh, once the blossom falls, and as it has done on these pears here, then we'll get um, insecticide on to attack the pear midge. I will not be drawn on specific uh, compounds. Uh, you need to sort that out yourself, uh, depending on the rules and the laws where you live and what's available. And if you're spraying, you may generally as well put in a fungicide as well as your insecticide, uh, although you know, if, you, if, you, if you've just got a fungus problem and you don't have an insect problem, you may need to use um, um, you know, just one or the other. So basically hit before blossom, don't hit during blossom, unless you've got a very bad scan problem, in which case you may need to hit with uh, in a fungus side during blossom. Hit again after blossom and then a hit again, probably round about the second week of June for the apple codling moth. Hey, but that's a specific issue and you need to be aware of your specific issues locally. The pheromone trap, which I'll show you later, uh, catches the male codling moths. Okay, it reduces the number of them around, so fewer uh, females will lay fertile eggs. However, uh, the main purpose of it is to find out when egg laying activity is high and then hit with insecticide seven days after that to hit the emerging eggs. Right, that's all I want to say right now, uh, but as I say, I would appreciate not getting asked a lot of specific questions on um, crop protection because I'm not minded to answer them because uh, it would just take too much effort. I'd probably be inaccurate and of course where you know, YouTube is global and a lot of my viewers, in fact more than half of my viewers are in the United States, I hesitate to, um, to give specific advice uh, because it may not be applicable. Um, where uh, you live. Okay, I hope that makes sense.